Welcome to uh, the Food is Medicine for the Brain class with Dr. Wall. Dr. Terry Walls lives here in Iowa City. She works with the Veterans Hospital, and she herself, I'm sure she already told most of you here, is an MS, what do you want to call yourself? An person. MS person, I yep. guess. And so she has been working with food in conjunction with other things to help improve her own situation. And she's here to share some of the strategies that she's come across with all of us. Um, I just like to say a word about the classes today. Uh, thank you all so much for coming. This is a very important part of New Pioneer's mission is uh, education and outreach. So we're really, really happy and really proud to be able to do these sort of things. We also want to welcome Josh from PATV. He's going to film this stuff and make it available to us at the library at a later date. And of thank course you. on their channel, so there's that. Um, we have two working members with us this afternoon. We have Jedden and Roxanne, and so give them a round of applause. They've done a tremendous amount of work getting together with food and all that stuff. My name is Jeannie Maybanks. I work with New Pioneer. Uh, I'm the customer service manager for both locations. Should any of you ever have a concern, a compliment, a request, any sort of comment at all, you can always contact me. But no further ado, Dr. Walsh. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> could you uh, pop open my... Uh, PowerPoint? You okay. So let me uh, begin with my story. I have progressive multiple sclerosis. I was diagnosed in 2000 just as I moved here to Iowa City. And I uh, began taking Copaxone. I was told I'd have a mild disease, everything would uh, work well. And if I could not have any acute relapses, things would go very well. And I did not have any acute relapses, but I gradually got worse anyway. Uh, by 2003, I needed a cane. Later that year, I needed a scooter, and then shortly thereafter, a tilt recline wheelchair. My back was so weak I could not sit uh, upright in a regular chair. Uh, I took uh, Novantrone, which is chemotherapy, and got to experience the uh, wonders of uh, chemotherapy-related vomiting. Neutropenia was uh, very humbling. Uh, and eventually, I decided that I was not getting much benefit, and it was certainly uh, too toxic to continue. I then started Tizabri when that became available, but that was pulled from the market when people started dying from it and was switched to Cellcept. I continued to have a steady uh, sense of decline. That was when I uh, went back to reading the medical literature night after night and uh, finally decided that mitochondria uh, were a key player in MS and uh, then began researching what were the nutrients that I could take that would better support my mitochondria. I began taking coenzyme Q, uh, B vitamins, lipoic acid, and carnitine. And the speed of my descent slowed, so it flattened out. I was very, very grateful, uh, although it was still declining. In the summer of 2007, I could walk short distances with two canes. I was still working full time. Uh, and my partner and I were talking about uh, what changes would I have to make in the house to bring the scooter into my home because while I could walk around in the morning, it was very difficult to walk even very short distances in the evening. Uh, that was when I became aware of, oh, next, let's, let's get on, get pictures of me in the wheelchair. There we go. Uh, a picture, uh, that was when I became aware of a study using neuroelectrical stimulation uh, and people were paralyzed, and I decided maybe that could help folks with MS. I checked the literature, no one had ever done it in MS, but I convinced my physical therapist to let me have a try, and I uh, began electrical stim, uh, and he was right, it hurts, it hurts a lot, uh, but it was not fatiguing. I also, at that time, I decided that I was going to relearn that first year of, bio, of medical school, so I relearned my biochemistry, my cellular physiology, my neurophysiology, and made this uh, wonderful list of all the uh, substrates or bio or uh, building blocks that my brain needed to make myelin, make neurotransmitters, uh, and for my mitochondria to work. Uh, and then I created th this list of nutrients. I would go to my medical text, and I thought, okay, I'll see what I need to eat. Oh, well, that, that wasn't helpful. Then I went to my nutrition text to see what I need to eat. Well, they, they were talking about cholesterol and protein and Sodium, they weren't talking about those, those substrates. So then I went to up-to-date and a few more references, couldn't find anything. And 
then realized I had to research this on my own. Uh, several more months went by, but I, I did finally figure out the foods that held uh, these nutrients and began on uh, the 1st of January this new diet, which then led to uh, rapid gains in strength. Uh, it was striking. Week by week, I was stronger. Uh, so by the end of January, I was walking between exam rooms. I was walking to clinic. By the end of March, I quit using the scooter entirely. On May, I got on my bike for the first time in six years. My kids were terrified. They were as afraid I was going to crash and do something terrible, uh, but I didn't. I biked around the block. I was tired after going around the block, but very excited. Uh, then uh, in the fall, I biked 18 miles on the uh, Courage Ride bike tour, walked up only one hill, which astounded me even. Uh, and now I bike five miles to work twice a day. Or I bike to work and back to home. OK, so next slide, please. Down. Yeah. No. There we go. We are good. Okay. Ne next one, please. Okay. So I was completely transformed in how I see disease and health as I experienced this transformation, uh, largely thanks to the change in nutrition, has totally changed how I see disease and health, and I began incorporating these nutritional concepts in my practice. At the VA, I said I would really like to work in the traumatic brain injury clinic um, because I could take advantage of my interest in nutrition and in brain physiology to help these guys. And so I used these concepts for them uh, with wonderful results. I also use these concepts in my primary care practice uh, where I see inter uh, internal medicine, type problems, diabetes, arthritis, heart failure, high blood pressure. Uh, we have many, many, many people with severe psychiatric disorders uh, in the VA, both in primary care and in the traumatic brain injury clinic. We have folks with uh, depression, bipolar, substance abuse, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. And all these folks are significantly helped with these nutritional interventions. Uh, and then these uh, same nutritional interventions I uh, talk about are very helpful for Parkinson's, uh, very helpful for uh, migraines, uh, tension headaches, chronic headaches. And there are reason to think that they would be helpful in slowing the damage from Huntington's uh, and ALS. And they certainly slow the damage uh, for dementia. Next slide, please. Okay. I uh, covered this uh, briefly last time, but I, I want to highlight it again. There's this wonderful work that was done by Weston Price, who was a dentist from the 1930s. He had in his practice kids come in with rotten, crooked teeth, and he wanted to know why the uh, dental health was so bad. He assembled a multidisciplinary team uh, and went out to look at 14 different peoples around the world. He took soil scientists, nutritionists, ethnographers, uh, dentists, physicians, mental health professionals. And he took um, did physical exams, uh, dental exams, uh, mental health assessments, medical histories, and lots of photographs. He has photographs of families whose kids were born to uh, when both parents were eating a primitive diet, and then who later in life uh, the later kids were born eating a Western diet. And then he analyzed the results according to what was the diet that was being eaten at the time. Was it a primitive diet? Was it first generation Western diet, second generation Western diet? And what he saw was the first generation, pardon me, the primitive diets had straight teeth, no cavities, less than one per thousand, uh, very good mental health stability, uh, essentially no high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, uh, no arthritis, good physical fitness. First generation Western diet had crooked teeth and about 50% uh, cavity rate, uh, and the mental fitness declined and the physical fitness declined. There was more high blood pressure, diabetes, and arthritis.